Now to be able to make the piece of material that will form the lamp shape, we need a few measurements. Well, we need at least this measurement, this diameter across here. So I've selected that rim there. And now I'm trying to get <laughs> ah, there we go. Time at 205.32. Make your faces exactly in. We see it, it does indeed go through the center. 205.32 from that corner to the other corner. There, there we are. Now, the problem is we need to cut. The material at that diameter, but the perimeter of the piece we cut has to be the same length as the perimeter of the final lampshade. So how do we cut that so that when it is cut up and folded into that shape, it'll be the right dimensions? We need to do some calculations. Now that we've got our model of the cone built, we see that the diameter of the cone on the outside is 205.3 or 102.65 radius. Now the circumference of a circle equals the angle in radians times the radius. And the angle of a circle is 2 pi radians. So this radius times 2 pi or the diameter times pi is the length of the circle. So that gives us the length of the arc around here and we already have the radius so we can make that piece. And all we need is the angle between there and there because those two put together and then we are 10 degrees for the half lap joint. So knowing the circumference of that, that bit and the radius, we can work out what that angle is. And, and we know that the circumference, the two circumferences are equal. So we can set up a, an equation that rearranging gives the angle r times two times pi divided by this r. And we come up with an angle of 4.7 radians. There are 57.3 degrees in a radian, so 4.7 radians give us 269.3 degrees, which is that angle there. Now this 2D package that I'm using, unfortunately, does not measure angles greater than 180, so it can only show the angle of the piece we need to cut out which is 80.7 but we can use the 279.3 degrees to form our 3D part in Design Spark Mechanical. So with all that information we can go ahead and model the piece of material we need to make our cone. And to do that we're going to use this surface here that we designed earlier. We're going to rotate it around an axis and use the angle 279.3. We can hide the cone. That is the end of part two. In part 3 we show how to put the half lap joints on the end of the piece of material we've made and we show how to overcome a potentially disastrous problem in Design Spark Mechanical which will show that if you see errors come up in Design Spark Mechanical it could be something you're doing wrong or it could be something Design Spark Mechanical is doing wrong. So 
pays to take attention of this. I hope you found this very interesting and useful and I hope to see you again in the next part. Please subscribe. Bye.